I loved doing this interview. John Gallagher, he has got to be one of my favorite people. I had never met him before. You guys know that on these interviews, a lot of times the people that I interview, I've never actually spoken to before. And John was one of those guys who he popped up on my my friend suggestions on Facebook. And you guys know I'm always hunting for someone who loves Jesus to hear their story. And so I clicked on his page and uh, we became Facebook friends. And I just saw the things that he was doing for the Lord and I, I just, I just liked him. Whenever I saw his page, I just like, I just like this guy. He just, he's got the spirit of the Lord on him. He's just got that humility and that sincerity that we look for on this podcast. You could just tell he was sincere. And so I just sent him a message saying, Hey man, I mean, I'm very much paraphrasing. So basically, Hey man, I would love to have you on the show and just want to hear your story. And he has a podcast. I have a podcast. And I thought, Hey, this works. And so I wrote him and he was so generous and uh, it was such an honor that he was willing to come on and do this show and to share his story. And we go, we go into the weeds a little bit in this podcast, guys. We talk about things that, that uh, we talk about documentaries and, and uh, that this, the, what is it, the social dilemma and some of the political stuff with the election you guys, you guys know about. How I don't talk so much about politics, but I do talk about some of the things that are going on in terms of how it's affecting the church. And so we talk a little bit about that because John, he actually works with Dr. Randy Clark. Uh, and Global Awakening, which is a really powerful on fire ministry. If you haven't heard about it before, you got to check it out. Uh, Found Ministries actually, we actually start, a lot of people don't know this, we actually started out under Global Awakening for the first two years. Uh, they were our covering for quite a while until we transitioned into the covering that we're under right now. And so John is just sincere and his story is so awesome. I loved doing this interview with him. I know that you're going to really enjoy it. It's going to be such a huge, huge blessing for you. And also, again, I want to remind you that we have started doing something where if you become a a supporter of the show for $50 or less, then we bill you in the credits at the end of the episode as a supporter, like, like movie credits. And if you do $50 or more, then you're billed as a producer. And this is an idea that I stole from Darren Wilson from the Finger of God movies because that's what he did with his newest movie whenever he was crowdfunding. And uh, he didn't tell me that. I, I don't know him personally. Although you will find out when I was talking to John that I'm, I'm trying to get him on the show. And uh, hopefully John may or may not be able to help with that. He made no promises. So I don't, I don't want to hold anything against anything against him if it doesn't work, but I'm hoping to be able to do an interview with Darren one of these days. And so, uh, yeah, I'm looking for supporters. I'm trying to raise support for this podcast. We, th- this is something that I do that a, a large amount of hours every single week is dedicated to, it isn't just filming it and then just throwing up, like the, throwing it up on, on a board somewhere on YouTube, there's editing involved. And uh, like whenever I do a zoom interview like this, I actually shoot one part on a camera and then the other part is on zoom because my, my laptop is so bad. The camera is so bad on it that I have to record it on two cameras. And then I put do- both of those videos into an editing thing that I, it's just a free editing software that came with my old, old computer. And then I have to for I go through the entire podcast and then I have to cut all of that together so that it becomes this seamless episode. Well, usually seamless. I have gone back and looked at episodes that I uploaded and seen little, little hiccups in it every now and then, but Hey, it's, this is a one man show. I'm the only one doing this, doing, I'm doing all the recording, editing, setup, all that kind of stuff. And so it just, it, it takes quite a bit, even for the audio. Some of these episodes, I have to sync all of the audio together because with zoom, sometimes the audio is out of sync and it's all weird sounding. And so I try to fix it as much as possible. So if you would please consider praying about becoming a supporter of the show, I'd really appreciate it. And also sharing about the show and uh, sharing it on your Facebook. If you're blessed by this episode, put it on your Facebook or your social medias or whatever, however it is that you do it. Just tell people about the show and help us continue to grow and get up to that hundred subscribers or plus. I, I would love to, my, my ultimate goal is I'd like to get to a thousand subscribers, but right now I'm going, I'm pushing for a hundred. 
So if you would just help ask people to subscribe and then I have an ant lollipop that is waiting for me to eat live for all of you. So thank you so much for joining us. I love you guys. I appreciate you who have been listening for a, for a good while now. Some of you have been with me for months. Some of you are new. Welcome to those of you who are new. I know that you're going to love this episode because I loved it and I have found that if I like it, usually other people like it. And so you guys are going to be blessed and uh, I love you again. Thank you. Enjoy this awesome interview with John Gallagher. Hey, John. Hey. <laughs> How you doing, man? Good. Good. How are you? I'm doing really well. I'm glad to finally meet you in person. Well, I mean, yeah. virtual person. Yeah, virtual. <laughs> and I'm really glad this worked out. So. Yeah, me yeah. too. I know. I know things have been pretty busy with uh, the, those changes. You're in Iowa, right? Pennsylvania. Oh, you're in Pennsylvania. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, so. Pennsylvania. Yep. Okay. So, yeah, because there was those, there have been all these lockdowns that have been happening and people are having to do their meetings yeah. uh, virtually now. So I'm, I'm, I'm glad you were able to, I know you just said you were really busy, so I'm glad you were able to have the time for this. Yeah. Yeah. I, so, yeah, in Pennsylvania, there is lockdowns uh, happening and, yeah, it's, it's been pretty crazy, but um, yeah, I'm, I'm really excited and thrilled, uh, to be a part of, uh, this, uh, podcast revival movement, uh, that you're leading. Um, and so I'm, yeah, I'm thrilled to uh, be with you. So thank you. I, yeah, I appreciate you coming on the show. And, uh, just so you know, I have, so I have a very old laptop and okay. so uh, what, what you see is not what comes out on the episode because I actually, okay. <laughs> I have I have a, a camera right behind it because I did the first few episodes with this the, with my laptop and it's so yeah. bad like the lighting is so bad. Oh, okay. <laughs> I can't. It doesn't matter what I did. I couldn't get it to look good. So I started using a a, a camera behind it. So that's what I okay. I, I intercut. So uh, yeah, just so you know. So the microphone is weird, but it looks it looks better than the other camera. Okay. Yeah. Great. And can you hear me? And you can see me good. Yeah, you look good. I, I can hear you well. Everything looks good. Great, great, great. Because I mean, I, I do have a condenser microphone, um, you know, but some people can't tell the difference. So I, I, I just felt like I want to move my hands a little bit tonight. Didn't hit the microphone the way. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, that's awesome. That's great. Yeah. Cool. Well, hey, man. So um, well, welcome to the podcast officially. And so on, on this podcast, what we always start out with, because you're new to the show, this is the first time we've had you on. Yeah. And so what we like to start with is for our guests to just share their testimony, kind of where they came from. Did you grow up in the church? How did you get into the ministry you're in? And, and then we'll just, we'll just go from there. Is that all right with you? Sure. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Uh, well, I leave it in your hands then. Okay. So yeah um how did i get to where i am today uh that's a pretty loaded question uh, my testimony and all that does um, intertwine with it uh so yeah i did grew up in church um and uh in a christian family and i actually actually accepted jesus christ into my life as my lord and savior when i was five years old and uh baptized in the holy spirit speaking in tongues as well i went to um, a sons of god church but it was more pentecostal driven um, and so there was a lot of emphasis on tongues, uh, <laughs> and uh, growing up, uh, you know, uh, my dad decided to, to move from a you know suburban uh, part to a rural uh, part of uh, northern Illinois. I grew up in the Chicagoland area, um, and so I went to a much smaller Sons God church, and uh, their focus was not necessarily speaking in tongues, but interpretation of tongues. Huh. And so growing up in church, I'm like, God, there's got to be more to church than you know, going to church and hearing worship for 30 minutes and hearing a message for 45 and this tongues thing, you know, there's got to be more. Like, I always wonder, like, okay, you know, does God heal today? Like, what about words of knowledge and prophecy, you know, and all this? And so that actually led me on a quest of uh, reading books um, and exploring actually more of the uh, prophetic and apostolic as far as you know, how that all works in the body of Christ, you know, fivefold ministry and all of that jazz. So um, growing up in church, um, I was one to kind of ask questions and kind of, you know, kind of like investigate, kind of like, you know, why, why am I, 
why am I seeing this? You know, and it's funny because like right now I'm, I'm working for Global Awakening uh, with Dr. Randy Clark as a video producer. And, you know, um, back then I, I wondered, is there more, like, is there more to church than <laughs> what yeah. I'm seeing? I didn't, I mean, like, it's funny, like I kind of had that language back then, but like, it's funny now, like Randy has that language. Like he wrote a book on there is more. So like, um, I love that I book. Even, yeah, me too. And I didn't even know who Randy Clark, Dr. Randy Clark was like, you know, way, way back when, you know, growing up in church. So I'm 32 years old. 32 years old now. Um, and, you know, during that process, you know, it's probably, you know, 15, 20 years ago. So, um, so about my testimony is um, even so more so in the far uh, spectrum of things is in 2010, I went to a young adult conference um, and uh, it was a large conference in Indiana. And uh, one of the, uh, one of the speakers there uh, just, you know, uh, tug a chord in my heart, just uh, not to be just, you know, one that hears the word, um, you know, but, uh, you know, hears the word and then does it, you know, and yeah. lives it out in faith. And so I didn't want to be one just to, you know, memorize a whole bunch of scripture or to be like finding myself just, you know, kind of religious, but not even knowing it consciously. And so it's like in 2010, so, you know, some people use this phraseology of like, you know, I recommitted my life to Christ. But for me, it was more like recommitting my life to living in radical faith in my mm. relationship with God. And so for me, that's, <laughs> you know, you know wow. from, from there is I went from, you know, really making some faith strides because um, then I was, you know, pursuing an IT career. And, you know, this was, you know, just when, a lot of technologies were, were booming and, and my, my dad has been in IT all his life and I was good with technology. I, I won awards, um, you know, in, in uh, my teenage years. Uh, Award, awards for what? Uh, for computer projects. Oh, wow. Uh, did, so, did you like design like an awesome computer or something or? Yeah, that's actually one of the, you know, projects that I did do. Yes, what? was to build a computer. Yeah, that's one of my projects when I think I was 17 years old. So I was a part of uh, 4-H, which is more known for, you know, agricultural type things, but, you know, for having projects at the fair, but uh, a lot of, like I, I won state state fair uh, four times in a row for tech projects. Um, wow, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So like it, it looked like a really clear, you know, future for technology, you know, career wise. And it made sense, you know, father like son, you know, just made sense logically, but then, you know, having a relationship with God, um, I didn't want, uh, what I thought to interfere with what God wanted for my life. And so when I was just spending time with God, I had this impression inside. It wasn't like an external voice. It was just a, a deep impression inside basically said, uh, do you want to do what you think you should do? Or do you want to do what I'm leading you to do? Wow. And I'm like, well, God, I want to do what you're leading me to do. I don't want to do what I'm thinking. Of. And then and then from there, it was like another impression, you know, uh, some people use the word like download. It wasn't necessarily download. It was just like someone speaking to me in every fiber of my being from the inside. And it was, it was uh, basically, well, well, John, well, you know, well, son, I want you to, you know, use media as a catalyst to shift and change culture for my kingdom. I'm like, wow, like, what does it even look like? And he's like, well, John, I just want you to follow me and I'll direct your steps. And that was the instructions that I was given um at at that time you know over 10 years ago and so what uh, is anyone in your family in ministry the, the lord just called you're the first yeah no one in my family is in full-time ministry yeah no one, like both my younger sisters are engineers my dad was a systems architect for different uh telecommunications companies and a consultant for them too um, so, and my cousin's a lawyer, my other cousin's a, a sports journalist. Like, I don't really have anyone in my extended family, uh, I, I, at all that are involved in full-time ministry. Oh, I uh, love that. I love that. <laughs> so, yeah. So, um, and then like going and pursuing some kind of, you know, media calling, like there was, it was like going to a foreign country. Like, I didn't even know like what that looked like for a career. You know, I didn't even know like what even college would go to. Like I knew in, I, in the IT space where that would be, but in the media space, I didn't. So 
Um, you know, still, but I, I did know two things. I, I knew to stay in the state of Illinois and I knew to go to some kind of Christian university. That, those are things that were instructions that I just felt like God was leading me to. Um, and so uh, Moody Bible Institute did not have a filmmaking program. This was in 2008, right? So we were just going from uh, SD to HD. You know, the iPhone just came out a year ago, 27 or 2007, right? And so technology was still emerging, right? Um, and so we in college, uh, they, they had a radio and audio production degree you know, in Bachelors of Arts, but really no filmmaking. So it's just really funny. It's like God calls you <laughs> to doing something. It's like, wait, why is this door closed? Why, like, why is this making sense? But I, I, I've learned over the years that I'm, I'm kind of a forerunner. So like, sometimes God shows me stuff and it's like, it's beyond my time. And I have to, you know, figure out how to, you know, catch up and have vision for it to, you know, bring it forward. But that's, I'm, I'm not, I don't want to get carried away with that but anyway um so <laughs> uh so uh one of my mom's uh, uh da friend's daughters uh went to judson university and i didn't know what judson was or anything like that but it was about 40 minutes away and so i decided to have an appointment with an advisor and i'll never forget this i walk uh, past the hallway and i see this poster it says finger of god on on the poster oh <laughs> and <laughs> I didn't even know like what what is this you know and so i walked into the office and you know 12 years ago no one knew who this guy was but obviously he's more known now and that was darren wilson yeah, yeah. so darren wilson was um you know a professor for many years at just university uh teaching a lot of communication classes um and you know when i met him he just got you know he had his uh um masters of arts um in screenwriting from regent um and he had favor uh, to uh, be a professor at Judson uh, at a very young age. And so I just shared with him, you know, my vision and everything like that. And, you know, he just came out with the movie Finger of God at that time. And so I was just sharing, you know, just vision and, and, and passion and heart. And then he's like, well, you know, um, you can take this class, this class, this class, this class. And I'm like, whoa, <laughs> like, I'm still like deciding on this, you know, financial and time commitment to be here. And it just like, and also like a, a light bulb just happened. It's like, wait, this is the only open door. Like I can either choose to walk in it now or, 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 or wait and not know what, you know, to expect. And then it's like, sometimes you have to remind yourself of what God has called you to do, even in, even if it's not what, you know, you thought it looked like. So, um, I, so I decided to be a part-time student. And then from there, I decided to be full-time the rest of the years. And then- uh, the So was, first, was Darren your professor during that time? Yes, for the first two years before he went into full-time uh, filmmaking, uh, which was my last year at, at Judson. I was there for three years. I had the uh, honor of being in a lot of uh, Darren's classes for the first uh, two years uh, of being at Judson. That's awesome. So, Have you guys maintained a relationship at all? Um, not as much as I've hoped, um, but he, he does know me and, um, yeah, so. And, That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. I, I've been trying to get him to come on the podcast. Okay. Well, maybe I can hook you up. <laughs> yeah, dude. I, I wrote him, but he doesn't know. I've never met him, so he doesn't know me, okay. but okay. I've been, I've been writing, trying to get a hold of him to get him on the podcast. I've had some, I, I mean, I've had some awesome guests. I've had like Sam Childers, like the machine gun preacher and, that's and awesome. he, I had a uh, Dr. Brian Simmons from the passion translation on. Oh, great. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. So I, I really yeah. want, I love, I love those movies. I actually have an awesome testimony of, uh, uh, there was a man who, uh, he was not a believer for the longest time. And I had recommended the finger of God to a couple and they showed it to him. And he was so moved by that movie that he received the Lord right there. And he was an older gentleman who had resisted the gospel his whole life mm. and uh, came to the Lord after seeing it. So I would, I would love to be able to tell him that the, the whole testimony, but anyway, yeah. <laughs> yeah I mean, if you, if That'd there's any, you have any communication with him, I would, I would love to have him on the show, but anyway, yeah. go, go ahead and continue. Sorry about that. Sure. Yeah. Maybe I cook you up off, off air. So yeah. Yeah. So anyway, um, yeah. And then I, you know, I, got my bachelor's of arts in, in, uh, in media and communications. And, you know, from there I thought I would, you know, land a job immediately. Um, that ended up not happening. Um, <laughs> I ended up um, going into the freelance world, which, which was a whole nother degree of education that I 
didn't know I would have to sign up for. Uh, <laughs> and so um, I would, and um, I, in that time I, um, you know, met a editor uh, that edited um, a well-known Christian movie at that time. And he said, well, your portfolio at your college that you, that you have from all the work you've done in college is not going to be f sufficient to apply to, you know, um, you know, an, edit an editor job or, a, a, you know, a job in production. He's like, you need to create an entirely new portfolio. I mean, it was highly critical of my, of my work that I did at, you know, uh, from college. And so um, that, that, launched me into the freelance world to work with other artists and so i ended up doing like music videos for like aspiring christian rappers and like different you know music videos of different genres and was you know a lot some of it was a lot of pro bono and so i you know started building my portfolio of you know networking and collaborating and seeing the needs of others um to you know not only you know help me but to help them ultimately as well uh, hats, being on a lot of different production crews, um, had the opportunity of being on even a, on two different film sets, Mom's Night Out and um, Run the Race, which is a movie that came out um, like early last year. Um, and so, um, yeah, so, so then just being exposed to just a variety of different facets of production, both in ministry and in the marketplace. Um, and then also had an opportunity to be a high school teacher at a Christian um, school and taught um, high school electives, photography, video production, um, and yearbook and serving story and film and all that. And so I've, I've had a very unique uh, background um, in, in, in the education, media, and IT um, space. But it's like, it's, I feel like what I'm doing now, it's like everything that I've gone through and experienced, God has prepare me for what I'm, you know, doing now. Uh, and uh, it's, it's really amazing just to see like the things I've, you know, like, sometimes it's like a boomerang effect. It's like some things that like, you, you learn over the years, and you didn't think how that would work in your tool belt, and then you start pulling it out years later. So yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's amazing, man, you've done you've done so much. And being only 32, like that's, that's a lot of experience. I'm 35 myself. Okay. And uh, it's, <laughs> it's amazing the, the amount of experience you have and how uh, I love, I love talking to people who like, there are certain people you can see just through their testimony, through their story, how God so hand picks us and like hand builds us for certain ministries. And it's been amazing your journey and how God is, he's hand picked you for, mm -hmm. for what you're doing. So how did you, how did you get involved with Dr. Randy Clark's ministry? Yeah, so that's a great question. So a friend of mine uh, in Florida was like, hey, you should check out this job position at Global Awakening. And I'm like, what's Global Awakening? You know, <laughs> I, I was more familiar with like, you know, uh, Bill Johnson and the Bethel movement and some other apostolic, you know, ministries across the United States. But and I heard of Randy, but wasn't really acquainted with his ministry and what it all did. Um, and so uh, I applied to the job and like, okay, God, if this is like a next step transition that you have for me, then open the door, right? And so I applied to the job, didn't really hear anything. And then I heard back and they're like, yeah, we want to schedule an interview with you in preparation of my interview, you know, as a filmmaker, as a storyteller, you know, I didn't really want to read another theology book. I was more interested in the journey of Dr. Randy Clark. And so I'm um, still actually one of my most, actually the, my top favorite book of all time, you know, um, is his book lighting fires. And so um, I read his book, Lighting Fires, uh, which kind of shows you the journey of, you know, Randy, you know, uh, frying donuts at like three <laughs> o'clock in the morning to how he became such an influential apostolic leader today. Um, and so I was just super intrigued, super impacted by his story. And I'm like, wow, like, you know, th this is, this is something else. And so, you know, I did a whole bunch of research on Global Awakening beforehand, but all that to say, um, did a, just a, a span of, of interviews. The interview process lasted for two months. And then from there, um, you know, they had me on board and I've been in Brazil five times and also Canada and different parts of the United States. Um, and I've seen some wild, uh, crazy 
uh, healing miracles in Brazil, especially. Um, and I, and one of the things, or I have a lot of uh, hats I wear at Global, but uh, one of the things I was doing in Brazil was recording uh, the healings that were being uh, taking place really? uh, during during the meetings, whether it was people that had literal metal screws in their body and they couldn't bend, they couldn't squat or anything like that, be able to squat, bend, move, and like do <laughs> things that normal people do when they have no metal screws in their bones. So, yeah, I've seen some crazy unexplainable, you know, miracles uh, that the power of God has, you know, shown up in, in those, in those meetings in Brazil. Is there, is there something else like another, another miracle? I mean, you said the screws, but is there anything else that just sort of like blew your mind? It was just amazing. I mean, um, I, I think any, any time when there's people being healed from hearing or vision, you know, I find really remarkable, um, because, you know, it's one of those things where it's like science can't fix that, you know, but God can. Um, and I mean, yeah, I mean, there's, there's, there's been miracles where people's, you know, organs where they, you know, go to the bathroom are restored. I mean, it's just, some of them are just bizarre. Like some of the problems some people have and how God heals them is just really remarkable. So, wow. Yeah. <laughs> That yeah. is awesome. Yeah. yeah I, yeah. I actually had never heard of Randy Clark myself until uh, I want to say about three, three, maybe four years ago. I, I mean, I, I had been on the mission field already since 2001 mm -hmm. and I was in Panama. That's where I've lived for most of my adult life. And I was there with another missionary and she, she uh, just, she came up to me and she said, I feel like Randy Clark is supposed to lay hands on you. I had never heard of Randy Clark before. So I didn't, it meant nothing to me. I was like, okay, I don't know who that is. And I'm in Panama. How in the world am I supposed to even get anywhere near Randy Clark? And uh, so I ended up, it was, it was such a God orchestrated thing because I just, I had, I, I do usually a, a speaking tour once a year. I'll go for like two months here in the States and I'll, I'll kind of do a speaking circuit. And so I was planning one. And at that time I only had contacts on the East coast. And so I was looking for, like, I just looked up conferences with Randy Clark and I found one with him and I thought that it was on the East coast. I tell, I'm telling you, I saw East coast on there, whatever, whatever state it was. And so I bought all the tickets for the conference. It was the, uh, the revival Alliance conference. And oh, I, yeah. I, uh, yeah, I, I bought the tickets and then I came to the States and when I got here, I don't know how I missed it. The conference was in California. <laughs> and so I had a team with me, you know, and I'm telling them like, well, guys, we're, we're not going to be going to Florida or New York or whatever. We're going, I mean, we will, but we're going to, we got to go drive to California and back. And so we drove up there. And whenever we got there, I still didn't know who Randy Clark was. I did read, I'd read his, uh, one of his books and got to California. And there were, I mean, Bill Johnson and Heidi Baker and all, like everybody was there, you know? And, yeah. but I, and I was there like, okay, I need to get Randy Clark, who's the one guy I hadn't, well, him and Ch Che on was also there. Oh, okay. Yeah. But I hadn't heard of either of them. And so I'm like, I need to get Randy Clark to pray for me, but I don't know how to, how do you do that? And uh, he had a prophetic word. And he said, if anyone who is going to the Middle East in the next few months, and I was about to go to Turkey. Oh, and wow. so uh, he, he called us up and there were a handful of us that went up there. And I've been to a lot of conferences and I've told this people, people this story quite a bit, but I've been to a lot of conferences. But whenever I stood up there with, with Dr. Randy uh, Clark, I, I had never felt anything like what I felt up there. I mean, I couldn't stop shaking and that had never happened to me in my life. I'm, <laughs> I, I'm the guy who like, when people pray, I'm the one guy who never falls over. Like that's me. You know, I, yeah. I'm always like, man, I must have the hardest heart because I never react. And, yeah. uh, but man, when I was up there, it was so powerful. And so he, that really was kind of a, it was a life changing thing for me. And so I have a lot, I, I've still never sat down to talk to Randy or anything like that, but I have, I have so much respect for him and, yeah. and uh, his, his ministry is just so powerful. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, so you've been to Brazil a bunch of times and so you, yeah. you have been with the ministry for you, how many years did you say you've been with them? Uh, it's been over two years now. Two years yeah. now. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And so you're, I imagine 
going so in the beginning you mentioned that the, a lot of the focus was on the pentecostal moving on speaking in tongues or interpretation of tongues yeah i grew up in a lot of assemblies of god M- most of my pastors oh, really? were, were assemblies of god so i i have also heard about but but um i felt like you were mentioning that because it's different now and yeah. so uh can it you is. can you kind of speak into that uh yeah sure i mean i don't attend an aging church anymore um but uh yeah, it's become, you know, I, I do highly respect um, AG, um, but um, unfortunately, um, so now in the capacity that I'm in, I've learned a lot more theology. Like I've learned more about ministry and leadership and theology than I've learned about media trends, right? Mm. Um, but because of that, that has given me more lenses to choose from with seeing different ways in which um you know the body of christ functions and operates and uh, unfortunately um like i believe like i had this vision i was i was driving uh with an evangelist friend of mine and he's in full-time ministry and while i was driving with him i had this vision of of a hand and i saw this hand crippled and i saw this uh this angel with uh with a vase pour oil on the hand and have it become release and it's unfortunate that the sons of god a church um has the hand crippled by not allowing the fivefold ministry to fully operate in its fullest potential but when the with, with one the, the fivefold ministry and the hand is fully you know um working and usable it has a lot of you know uh, strength to you know wield you know against the powers of darkness and so you know, how can we expect for us to take territory for the kingdom and to advance the kingdom, you know, if we have, uh, if we are, um, you know, disabled in how we exercise what God has given us as sons and daughters in the kingdom. And so I, I really respect a healthy form of a, an apostolic prophet, you know, pastor, evangelist, teacher that is operating within the fivefold ministry and is advancing the kingdom in a way that's uh, giving glory to God. And obviously there is you know, false, (laughs) false ones out there, but we're just focusing on, you know, just how, you know, uh, there, there is advancement that occurs when, um, the body of Christ comes into the ancient blueprint of what God originally intended and designed for the body of Christ. So you feel like the assemblies of God puts, they put too, like all of their focus on tongues and not on the other ministries. Is that, is that what you're, you mean? I'm saying that they put a lot of emphasis on pastoring and teaching Oh, and not gotcha. a lot of emphasis on kind of exemplifying kind of a full spectrum in in the body of Christ. And, you know, it's interesting, like with Randy, like, you know, um, and I agree with him, is that um, a sense of God believe, and I I'm, I respect a sense of God, okay? Don't get me wrong here. Yeah, but yeah. <laughs> he wanted to know some of the contrast. The other contrast is that um, the evidence of someone being filled with the Holy Spirit is speaking in tongues. Well, I don't agree with that. Um, anymore. Um, and I agree with Randy, where if someone's crying, you know, that's also holy tears. That's also a sign of someone being filled with the Holy Spirit. You know, if someone is is laughing, you know, in a holy laughter, that's also someone being filled with the Holy Spirit. So speak, you know, speaking in tongues isn't the only emphasis of someone being filled with the Holy Spirit. Yeah. So for, for the listeners and viewers out there who, who watch this, just to kind of clarify as well, because a lot of people don't know, know what you're talking about, which okay. is that there, <laughs> there are Pentecostals and there are charismatics and people usually yeah. use those words synonymously. But in reality, a, a Pentecostal person, which is like the assemblies of God, they have what, what you're talking about, which is the belief that speaking in tongues is like the end all the one and only right. uh, um, manifestation of being baptized in the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, while while a charismatic, which is like Dr. Randy Clark and a mm-hmm. lot a lot of people, um, uh, Amy Simple McPherson, a, a lot of the historic people as well. On this podcast, I do like biographies as well. Okay, cool. um, a lot of people they they're what was called charismatics from the the word charismata, which yeah. is like a Greek word, which is sort of like a an array of different gifts of the Holy Spirit, and that any any infilling of the holy spirit can be the baptism of the holy spirit and so that's what that's what dr mm-hmm. dr clark teaches as well and yeah. uh, so okay so yeah that's that's um that's more where i lean as well because i've uh, my wife for example 
I know she's filled with the whole, I know that she's filled with the Holy spirit, but she didn't speak in tongues until just a couple of years ago. We've been married for like 14 years now wow. and she didn't speak in tongues for like the first decade of our marriage. Wow. And, but I, but I mean, we were going all over the world preaching the gospel. So, and she, I mean, we had AIDS healed and blind people healed and cancer and all that. And she didn't speak in tongues. So I was, I, I came to the conclusion, like, I can't say she's not full of the Holy spirit because God is clearly, <laughs> clearly using her. So yeah, yeah I, I, I agree with you on that. Great, great. Well, I, I didn't know where you were leaning towards, but um, <laughs> yeah, you wanted to hear kind of my, you know, contrast with that. And again, I highly respect AG, but um, there's just uh, more things that I've been exposed to, theologically speaking, and I've seen the evidence of people being filled with the Holy Spirit without speaking in tongues. And I've seen the transformation and, you know, it, not just, you know, the theory of the theology of it, but I've also seen and witnessed the experience of it as well to back the theology up. So um, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's, yeah. Like there's people in Brazil where like, um, like Randy's just speaking and all of a sudden the pastor is like shaking under the power of God and he belly flops to, you know, to the front of, of the stage, like just under the, the power of God. I mean, there's, I mean, sometimes the Holy Spirit can be um, unorthodox in how sometimes in our minds how God moves, and He likes to sometimes break the rules, you know, to see to, for Him to get for Him to go, get the glory and not us. So, That's right. Yeah. So your your job with with Randy and this the, in uh, production and and filmmaking, what what is that involved? So um, in a nutshell, it involves um, pretty much all pre-recorded content. Um, and some live content, but mostly all pre-recorded content um, I, I produce, shoot, uh, and and edit. So uh, just like I have the full gambit uh, of it. And uh, yeah. Wow. That's, that's pretty now, much it. So, um, okay. So you also have a podcast. I do. <laughs> and t- tell me about your podcast. What is your heart behind that? Yeah. So, um, you know, being at Global, I'm also surrounded by a lot of ministry students. So they like to... T- they like to give you a prophetic word. I want to use my gift, right? And so um, uh, at the beginning of this year, before COVID, I was getting like one, like, like all the, people coming from the woodwork. Oh, you're coming from, you know, behind the camera, in front of the camera, from behind the screen, in front of the screen. And like, like just this, this theme of these words. And I'm like, okay, God, like, what are you saying with this? Like, I need some, you know, Holy Spirit, you know, counsel on this. And I'm like, I don't picture myself giving a 35 minute message on, on Facebook. That doesn't, that doesn't make sense to me. Yeah. And so God, God just, I had the impression, I had a uh, Holy Spirit say, well, son, I want you to just host people that, you know, you know, in your network and have kingdom conversations that, um, that inspire both emerging and seasoned leaders in the ministry and the marketplace. I'm like, okay, so let's do this. So um, in in April, I started Talks with Gallagher, which is really a platform for someone else um, and to have conversations um, about their story to help other people's stories. Um, And uh, I've had uh, over 10,000 views and and listens uh, since then, because I have a video version and an audio version on all the platforms. Um, and um, it's really been healing, not only for me, but even for some of the people that are on my show. I had a pastor friend of mine from Houston when George Floyd happened, I had him on and he's like, John, you're one of the, f- he's, he's, you know, African-American pastor. He's like, John, you're one of the few like white Caucasian guys that was, that asked me how I'm doing and even asked me, hey, um, are you, because I asked him like, hey, are you willing to, you know, be on you know, the show this weekend and, you know, to share just your thoughts about justice. And he's like, sure. And so that, that video has, you know, uh, almost, you know, 250, hundred views, almost wow. 3000 views. And like, like his video got shared with like everyone else in his, you know, um, congregation and just it kind of spread. And so um, some, some of my talks can be really like cutting edge current events and some of them can be really relax and talking about someone's testimony. Um, and then some of them can be talking about people's, you know, um, just, uh, you know, whether they're in business or not, and just how, you know, they integrate themselves as a, 
as a you know uh, <laughs> a Christian um, into uh, you know their their workspace. And so yeah, so that's pretty much what Toxic Gallagher is, um, and it's it's been a lot of fun. Um, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I've really liked it. I, um, I'm looking forward to more episodes. I think, uh, I, you know, I've always, I've been into podcasting for a long time, just listening to podcasts and yeah. also video as well on YouTube. And I think that right now it is, this is like the upcoming thing that God is, is using. It's what's growing because I, I mean, I've been a missionary for 20 years. I'm in my 20th year right now, but oh. amazingly I get more feedback from this podcast than anything else I do. Mm. And uh, so I, I just, I just think it's so powerful and, and I'm really glad that, that you're doing it. And also for, for uh, listeners as well, I'm going to put the link to your podcast in the description oh, in the show you. notes. Oh yeah, absolutely. And so uh, you guys go check out his podcast uh, talks with Gallagher. It is it's really, really good. Make sure you subscribe. And if you're listening to the audio, make sure you give them a good uh, um, recommendation on there and share it because it is, it is definitely worth the listen. And uh, so, okay. Now, since you talk about current events, can we talk a little bit about something? Sure. Yeah, I have hey, a hit me up. Hit okay. Me up. I have a question for you. And I have been asking all of my guests this yeah. uh, in the past few episodes because this is something that is, is very current. And for me, it's something I have been trying to work through and uh, wrestle through as well. And so yeah. uh, right now we have this whole thing with the election yeah. and I don't follow politics a lot. So I don't know all of the ins and outs, but what I yeah. do know is in the church right now, there is kind of a, almost a bit of turmoil because mm -hmm. there were all of these bigger name prophets who prophesied that that Donald, President Trump would win in a landslide and it was going to happen fast and it was going to be unquestionable. And then yeah. when that didn't happen, then it became, oh, well, it was, it was voter fraud and that's going to, we'll, we'll work that. Like God's going to expose voter fraud. And yeah. so far that hasn't really happened. And so it's like the, the prophecies keep getting pushed back. And now some of these, some of these prophets, and I, I, we don't have to name names or anything, but some of these no. prophets, uh, they've almost become defensive because some people have started asking like, hey, so you prophesied these things that didn't happen. And some of them have either almost threatened people by posting verses like thou shalt not touch the Lord's anointed or um, throwing it back and, and saying, uh, well, this is, now, they don't say it exactly like this, of course, but they say, well, this is the church's fault because the church didn't pray it into fruition. Mm. And so I'm just, I'm curious, uh, especially because you're in the sphere of, of Dr. Randy Clark and, and mm. you're around a lot of ministry students and really uh, teachers with a lot of wisdom and you yourself have a lot of experience. So what, what are your thoughts on this? Well, I feel very honored that you would ask me this question. And I'm really thankful that you're asking this question uh, because I believe it's a very important one. Uh, I would say um, in essence that it is very, very important for as us kingdom citizens and ambassadors of Jesus Christ to be peacemakers in this season. I, you know, uh, like, the enemy loves to create division and strife and all of this. And how can the body of Christ be strong, even in a time of, of, of shaking globally in a pandemic when the body of Christ is, you know, um, hurting each other? I mean, how can we be effective in taking territory for the kingdom? So uh, I believe it's really critical. So, you know, I, you know, I know people that love Jesus that are, Republicans. I know people that love Jesus that are Democrats, okay? Um, and so I think like in this time, uh, you know, uh, God is um, using some of this whole uh, situation uh, to really bring greater purity in the prophetic um, I, and, and to really, uh, you know, check the hearts. Uh, I'm not even saying of, of prophets, but just of people's um, <laughs> people's intentions um, about how they navigate towards, you know, um, you know, particular uh, prophetic um, 
you know, uh, results uh, for a political process, right? Um, and so I, I also think there's a distinction with, you know, when we look at the prophets, right? Um, a distinction between a prophet that, uh, you know, prophesies a word of knowledge or a word of wisdom to a government leader as an like, as an advisory council, like Daniel did to King Nebuchadnezzar. But, but we don't ever see Daniel necessarily giving a prophetic word about certain, you know, because Daniel also counseled King Cyrus as well, right? We don't see Daniel necessarily giving a prophetic um, word on the result of an election that took place in Babylon, right? So I think, I think also in this purification process and the prophetic movement, I think sometimes we need to see a distinction between prophesying to a government leader and prophesying to, um, to a system that is uh, man-made. And I think those are two separate things. And uh, <laughs> so uh, I feel like I just need to just pause there and say if you have anything to, to ask about what I'm sharing so far. No, I just... I, I appreciate what you're saying because this has been kind of my message. I, I believe, I believe, uh, I know that this is such a sensitive topic. So I'm also trying to be careful with my words as well. <laughs> but I personally, I'm a strong believer in, in the separation of church and state. And okay. I, I, I believe in voting. I believe, I believe that Christians need to get out and vote and all of that. But um, I also believe in the church respecting authority and i i am very much against what i'm seeing right now where which you mentioned in the beginning which is the church attacking each other over political parties yeah because yeah. we are all under one kingdom we are all right. under jesus right and same as you i i am i have friends who are republicans not republicans and i have friends who are democrats and yeah. they're all children of the lord Right. And so, yeah. uh, and I know I have, I have a, um, I'm not going to name him. I'm hoping to get him on the show, but I, I have a, a call tomorrow with somebody who is being criticized ferociously. And he's a, he's a well-known uh, minister with like destiny house and, and God TV and all that. Mm -hmm. And I just have, a, just a, have a phone call with him tomorrow just to talk about this stuff because I, um, it, it's amazing how if you, if you are one of the the believers out there who isn't like a million percent Trump and putting those, the the pictures I see, and I, I'm going to get in trouble for this. Like, I hate that I'm saying that I'm not going to edit this out, but you know, <laughs> I just, I think it is, I think it's ridiculous. I think it's idolatry whenever I see so many ministers who are putting these crazy pictures of Donald Trump. Like I have one I sent to my mom because I just couldn't believe it. It's like Donald Trump riding a tank with the American flag in one hand and a gun in the other. And like, like, it's like, I mean, the church has made him the savior. And mm -hmm. I just completely, I, I completely disagree with that because Jesus is our savior. Jesus is who we bow to Jesus. Uh, and so that's where I stand on it. And I'm going to let you continue, but that's since you, you asked my opinion, that's what I think. <laughs> Yeah, I was just asking what, what you thought about what I've shared so far, and I appreciate you sharing that. And, you know, uh, Samuel Robin Rodriguez, um, he was one of our uh, speakers at uh, Voice of the Apostles, and this was right kind of, this was, you know, uh, near the end of August and kind of close, you know, to the election season. And so um, it's one of the things, I'm, I'm giving him credit because this is something he said that I really, really enjoy, and he's like, He's like, the kingdom of God is not an elephant or a donkey. The kingdom of God is the lamb, right? He's Amen. the lamb of God. And so um, I just, I just, that's always stuck in, in my, you know, in my mind um, that you're right. The kingdom of God is not a particular man-made political par party. It's outside of that, right? And even when we look at, you know, globally, you know, what's happening, you know, God is not a nationalist. And I'm That's not right. saying, I'm not saying God is a globalist either. Okay. God is his own, his own kingdom of what he represents, you know? Um, so, so all that to say, it's like, God is doing a lot of other things around the world than just, you know, the American bubble. 
Um, not to say that, you know, there's nothing special happening here. There is, but there's other things that are happening that, you know, when we look from a 30,000 foot perspective, you know, there's a lot of things that, that God is doing that is sometimes even beyond what we think in our own, um, in our own, Amer in our own frame of mind. So, yeah, yeah, I, I completely agree with you. I, I remember telling my wife because especially now there's still some of these, but you know, those there's all those political signs and that people put in their front yard and it would just, I just couldn't believe it. I couldn't understand. I still don't understand how we would drive down and I would just be look at telling my wife, just look, look at this because it would be rows and rows of all these signs. And you, I'm sure you've probably seen them too. They're the ones that yeah. say like, like a really small, like Jesus is my savior. And then a gigantic, <laughs> but Trump is my president. <laughs> like, Come on. Yeah. Not, are you kidding me? You put, you even put his Trump's name bigger than Jesus. I just, I'm sorry, but that's just, that's just wrong. Yeah. I, I think, I think we're seeing uh, literally all the signs that there is a huge need for reformation. Yes. Um, and I, I think, you know, when Martin Luther put, you know, that, that reform on the wall there, you know, on those doors, um, that there was a lot of political maneuvering that was happening. And, and I feel like whenever there's like a political shaking or, you know, even when it comes to the political landscape as well, that, you know, it, it just shows you how badly <laughs> we need to have a proper reformation because, you know, some people say we need uh, revival first and then reformation comes. And, and some people say, oh, well, we need uh, reformation first, then revival. And I, I think personally, I think uh, revival um, can only be, can only take place when there's genuine reformation first, right? It's kind of like, you know, the, the concrete that lays the foundation for the house, the house being revival and concrete being reformation, the revival needs something to put its weight on. It can't just rest and not go anywhere. So I believe we are living in some really exciting times, you know, with a lot of these, you know, things that when people talk about, you know, billion soul harvest and, you know, the greatest revival that's ever going to sweep earth is coming soon, all this. That's really what, what's, what's really being said is that, there's going to be such a enormous reformation that's going to take place that it's not going, it's, it's going to happen in different parts of the world. And it's going to really shake the foundations of Christendom as we know it. Yeah. Yeah. And I completely agree because just in terms of missions, because that is what I, what I do yeah. is, you know, I have a little bit of a, of a bird's eye view just because I have a small ministry, but we work in 10 nations and in a couple different continents. And oh, wow. so, so I get a little bit of a bird's eye view of, you know, I, I was recent, well, I say recently, this was last year because of COVID, but I minister in Iraq and mm. seeing, seeing how God is moving among the refugees in Iraq and in Nepal, seeing tens of thousands of people coming to Jesus in Nepal and how Brazil just uh, is right at the brink of surpassing. They might have already. I haven't checked the stats in a while. The United States and sending the most missionaries in the world, being the largest yeah. missionary sending country like that. Yeah. A couple decades ago, it didn't seem like the United States would ever be moved from that position. But now it's rapidly changing. And like South yeah. Korea, the amount of missionaries South Korea sends out is phenomenal. Yeah. And so I think we often – as a nation, you talked about the American bubble. I think we often get stuck in that bubble and we don't realize they're actually believers all over the world. And it isn't the end of the planet because our particular political party and our one nation didn't, didn't win. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> right, right. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, there's yeah. just so much more to it. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So I, so how, how do we, Cause you're, you're around a lot more, a lot more prophetic people than I am. How do we get reformation to happen? How do reformation to happen? Yeah. I mean, what part, of that, part of that is being a peacemaker, right? Because the culture of the kingdom is peace, righteousness, and joy, right? So part of ref, part of an authentic reformation is, is, uh, aligning your, aligning, um, you know, our, our, our belief systems, which then align in our actions, you know, in how we connect and relate to other people, right? It's that one verse too, where it's like, if you know the mysteries and like prophesy and like all this stuff, but 
you have no love, you're just a clinging symbol and, and like just a dong. So, you know, having, you know, being a peacemaker and, and, and that can only be done when you're connected to the true vine, right? When you're connected to the vine and you have a devotional life and you have a prayer life and a worship life, right? They, they see like, you're like the, the person that you spend like, the first, like the five people that you spend the most time with, like, you know, you're with. So it's like, when you spend time with Jesus, like you become like him, right? Um, and so, <laughs> I mean, sometimes we have to go down to, to the basics, but um, <laughs> really, um, uh, yeah, just, you know, having, you know, loving your neighbor, like my, my neighbor here is, is a Democrat, but I, I still love him, even though he's a Democrat, right? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I mean uh, like, so just loving your neighbor, being a peacemaker, you know, um, yeah, so, I, I, and, and I think sometimes we have to unlearn to relearn in our theology. I mean, some things that we have grown up in church that, um, you know, we thought was, you know, true is, may not necessarily be completely true, you know, uh, you know, what's, if it's, you know, 80% true, that means it's still false, right? Um, so, yeah, it's um, true. you know, sometimes we have to unlearn to relearn the truth because the truth is what sets us free, right? Um, and so, um, you know, I think part of the new reformation is a part of having uh, a new freedom as well. Um, and what God has for us as sons and daughters of the King. Yeah. I remember so there, there are a couple of things I remember. So I just watched the documentary, the social dilemma. Have you seen that? I haven't, but I've, I've seen the trailer on it. Yeah. It's, it was so interesting because it's, it's about all, it's got all of these, um, like Facebook and Instagram and like, uh, ex executives from these companies and ex founders and they mm -hmm. basically talk about how and i use social media all the time so i'm not on here to preach about telling people to get off or anything i'm just <laughs> it's just it's just interesting to me like they were talking about yeah. how how those things have created they create divisions among people mm. because what happens is their businesses and the way business, these businesses make money is by getting your attention. Your attention is the commodity they seek. And mm -hmm. so everything they do is about you staying on the app as long as possible. And the way they do that is they show you what you want to see because that'll mm -hmm. keep you watching. And so all of their algorithms, what they do is they, they show people because if, if you don't like what you see, you get off the app. And so what they, it, they were showing how it's created divisions among people and created this huge chasm between people of different political parties or religions or whatever, um, doctrines, denominations, because they, you only see what you want to see. And people spend hours every day on social media. And so uh, then that, that took me back to this sermon I heard by Bill Johnson. And he talked about how before uh, smartphones, they would have demons manifest in their church services and they would have all these crazy manifestations and God would move and all this stuff would happen. And he said, as soon as the smartphones came out and especially when social media started, all those demonic manifestations stopped. Mm -hmm. And he said, because everyone was already distracted. And again, I use social media, so I'm not saying everyone needs to get off or anything, but what I will say, yeah, and it goes back to what you're saying about being a peacemaker <laughs> is allowing, is allowing ourselves to understand that we can be poisoned by just seeing what we only, what we want to see yeah. and refusing to take into consideration that somebody else's point of view may be valid. Mm -hmm. And like, like, um, we talked about the assemblies of God and the charismatic church a lot of assemblies of God, like if you don't speak in tongues, you're barely even a Christian, <laughs> yeah. and, you know, but yeah. there, there are valid points in the charismatic yeah. point of view. <laughs> and so uh, I just, yeah. I just, I, I kind of, I feel like I'm kind of rambling, but I'm just wanted to encourage people like yeah. take into consideration other people have valid points of view and that mm -hmm. because of the social media world we live in, we can actually poison ourselves into believing something and brainwashing ourselves into believing something that may not even be true yeah 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 it's it's really alarming i mean what i didn't watch this from this documentary but i've uh, learned this from a different documentary is that they literally have uh psychologists and sociologists where they have fine-tuned the science to kind of like the endorphin you know release that happens in your brain so like the likes and like 
you know, uh, just how the model of social media is, especially with Facebook and Instagram, is it's, it's almost like a hard wire, you know, endorphin loop in your brain to want to have, you know, likes and comments and, and engagement because that, that, you know, helps the human psyche in a way where it gives it a certain a measure of endorphin chemical release in the brain. And so it's, it's pretty alarming how we have technology today where it is designed um, from the from the beginning uh, to um, work with our own psyche. <laughs> it's really, yeah, a, a really, a really alarming. It, yeah. is, it is alarming. And it's, it, I actually on that documentary, it was like, the, there was a guy he was on he was the the inventor of the like button for facebook oh <laughs> and, and i mean he was he was talking about how he's like you couldn't believe the amount of time we spent just designing designing it to make it as pleasing as possible to people because there's something about getting a like that people just they can't they can't get enough of it and they're <laughs> like that their self-esteem is based on the amount of likes that they get and I, I thought about it because after I watched that, that documentary, I was like, man, I'm addicted to my phone. I always have my phone on me at all times. Yeah. And so it was funny because I was like, I'm going to do a little experiment. I'm going to put my phone down away for like just a couple hours. And which I'll be honest, I have not done probably in months. It is always with me. It, if I'm not using it, it's in my pocket. And so I was like, I'm going to put it somewhere where I can't even see it. So I put it away for about two hours and I'll tell you what, man, you would have thought the world exploded whenever I got back because <laughs> I got back and the amount of messages I had and people panicking because I was not instantly responding. Like, what is wrong? Like, are you, did you, are you on fire? Are you dead? <laughs> and I realized like, this is a serious problem. I, I, I need to get away from my phone more. And uh, so I, I just, man, I, I, I'm, I'm working on that. I, I need to do that. Yeah. Uh, it's interesting that you said it because um, I, I've recently learned that they say the next feature technologies or things that we'll see is going to help people to disconnect from technology. Hmm. Um, and so like different experiences, like in nature or different things where, um, you know, there's no phone use that people have experiences to, not being bombarded by technology and to be able to, you know, detox from it. Um, and so there'll be products and services uh, that will be popular in the future that will be designed for that because it's just interesting how it's like kind of like ebb and flows and technology. Right. Um, and so, yeah, anyway. Yeah. yeah. We need it. I, one of the most, I, I don't get offended very easily. I'm a very laid back guy, but I'll, <laughs> I'll tell you what, I realized how addicted I was to my phone. One of the most offended I've ever been. I went to a conference and they made, they took away everybody's phone when you walked in <laughs> That's hilarious. For, for a whole weekend. And I was, oh, I was, I was livid, man. I was like, what? Take my phone. Oh man. And I realized wow. I have a problem and I, I, <laughs> I, I need to deal with it. But anyway, John, uh, thank you so much for, for joining me on this, on this show. And it has really been a pleasure to, to speak with you and hear your thoughts and your experiences and the, just the journey that God has brought you on. It's really been an honor to have you. Well, I, likewise, I feel the same. Yeah, it's an honor to be on your show and thank you for having me on. It's been a, a really fun. Right. Well, I, I hope that you'll come back on again for a, another episode one day sure. and yeah. uh, just share more. We can, we can talk more about what God's doing and the, the reformation that I, I really do believe is coming. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, brother. I'm gonna let you go. Oh, okay. actually, can you yeah. pray? Can you pray to close us out? <laughs> okay, sure. <laughs> <Thank> <laughs> so you. father god in jesus name i just thank you father for everyone who is watching and listening to this broadcast father and father you know um their needs and what's going on in their life father so i ask you father you give them just a fresh encounter with you father and that you would give them uh, peace in this time of uncertainty um whether it's health or political or whatever the case might be father so i just thank you father um that uh, you're giving them a fresh encounter with you father and that um and that you are meeting uh, their needs and you're bringing them, Father, to a greater place in, in you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Have yeah. a good evening. You too. Thanks.